start streaming. It's today. Today is a new day, and we're going to find out who Apple lied to today. And the answer is that it's, it's uh, going to be, where's the ticket? It's going to be Donna. Apple lied to Donna. Before we get started, while we wait for folks to join the live stream, I wanted to do a couple of announcements, which is mostly to highlight um, stuff that's been trolling us really hard. All right, first is the course. So I had um, Business Manager Sunday list the new courses. So everybody's asking when are the new courses coming out um, because we kind of got to the end of the schedule that I set about eight months ago. And they're listed, but they're listed kind of in backwards order. So I want to call your attention to that. If you're thinking about coming out to train with us at Practical Board Repair School, super fun time. Here's how you do it. Um, go to iPadRehab.com and then just click on uh, training. So the training tab tells you a little bit about the course. And then at the bottom is the sign up. So when you see a course date listed here, it means it still has availability. So it looks like the next one coming up is April 2020. That is not true. That is far in the future. So we are doing a March course and a February course. These are in backwards order, which is not how it's been for the last year. So I know that can be confusing. You can actually still sign up. I think there's still one seat left for November in a couple of weeks. So November course is open, December course is open. There's one in every month, January, February, March, February dates I may change if I can because it's my husband's 50th anniversary, 50th birthday. Oh my God. 50th, he's going to be 50. That's like, like Oprah turned 50. Like that's old. So I probably shouldn't have scheduled a course when he turns 50. So I might move that one. But other than that, this should be up to date. So you should be able to, you know, click on November and then kind of continue and, and just click through to get signed up. If you want to come hang out with us at Practical Board Repair School, which is always a rocking good time. And uh, that's what I wanted to say about that. You don't have to wait until April. That is, that's not the deal. Next, the forum. So forum, as of right now, is back online. Yay! Thanks to the folks at vBulletin and Scriptable Solutions, our um, webmaster. So Scriptable has put out some fires and the forum is back up and running, although it's, we're going to migrate it. We need to beef up the security on this thing because I'm tired of it getting hacked. And I'm sure that you are tired of it getting hacked if you're a subscriber. So if you're not a subscriber while it's up, you can hop on the forum. And while we're here, let's go ahead and answer a question. So you can kind of see what it's like if you're new. So we've got um, our subscribers here that uh, if you can't come to the course and you're just like, hey, help, kind of hold my hand through this repair, that's sort of what this is for. So here is a guy tipped in repair who's asking about an iPhone 7 with random static in the ear speaker. And let's just see what he says. Uh, so this was from today. He's going to do an audio IC on the iPhone 7. I want to see if anyone else has run into the issue where the phone boots normally. Upper camera assembly and ear speaker swap with known good, and it's all OEM, but loud static in the ear speaker. Uh, twisting the phone like touch disease, the static does change. Never been open for, and we had to break the seal. And it, so this is a really good question. So he's saying this phone shows no normal signs of audio I see, meaning when he tries to do a voice memo, it doesn't say no audio device is found, and it doesn't have what we associate with um, audio I see, the long boot time, it doesn't have that. So here's our news for you. Tipped in repair, when we did experiments comparing iOS 13 with iOS 12 for audio I see, there's different symptoms. So everybody should do these experiments because we're just figuring this stuff out. So are you. So uh, if you know something, leave us a comment and we'll help spread the word. So what we found out is that on iOS 13, audio IC disease does not have a long boot time anymore. It boots up normal. You cannot record an audio memo, it, but it doesn't say no audio device is found. So you try to record that voice memo and it just doesn't work. Um, it has another different and weird feature is if you go to uh, settings, general about to kind of see what iOS is on settings is super laggy like the old presentation back on iOS 11 where it had laggy touch 
when you're in settings, you have that laggy touch. So that's sort of what we've noticed about iOS 13 audio IC disease. Gone is the long boot time. Gone is the no audio devices found. So if I had a device with static on the speaker, then you know, then I would I would still be looking hard at the classic signature problem and kind of just rule that out before hunting something else. So he's got an update. He thinks he found the problem U3301 which is the audio I see, had a floating solder ball under it, apparently causing this issue. Removed, reballed, and I can't get the static to happen again. All right, so then that does sound like, you know, problem at audio I see. So uh, there you go. So I'm just gonna update this one while I'm here with, um, in our experience, what I just said, um, iOS 13 has a different set of symptoms for audio IC disease, which are no long boot time. Um, and it has, um, you still can't record a voice memo. Now this is, can be intermittent, right? You know, if you kind of twist it, it'll happen or twist it won't happen, depending on how severe it is. Still can't record a voice memo, but it no longer says, um, no audio devices found. And um, also in settings general about, about is very laggy. Um, what have you all seen for iOS 13 audio IC disease symptoms? And we'll find out. So we'll uh we'll leave the the forum is working and that answer should post and um we are happy to have that up but you'll want to look out we may migrate that kind of coming up here soon okay so let's go back and um and let's see so chat looks like it's working and somebody got a new iphone 11 pro max military green okay so let's see, uh, new iOS, th new symptoms. Uh, Wi-Fi will be grayed out and take forever to work. Okay. All right, fix it guides, easy to follow? Sure, I'm a newbie at screen repair. An iPhone 5? iPhone 5 is super easy, get after it. All right, so what did I miss, Chris? Not much, we just went over the fact that we've messed up the way our courses are listed and we've messed up the forum. So off to that great start, let's go ahead and see what is up with Donna's phone. So Donna is our case for today in our pile of devices. Now I definitely feel like I'm beating a dead horse because this is, I don't know how many streams that is Apple lied to me, but I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it because these still come in and they're still misleading. And after seeing that clip that Lewis showed yesterday, that apparently over on Apple support community forums where somebody said, hey, can you recover data? Some dude said, no, that's impossible. If you like to burn money, it's, that data is gone. And Apple recommended it, that answer. So the Apple recommended answer to this day is that, nope, you're burning money if you try to recover data. So let's see if we can help out Donna. So let's go to, to the hand cam, everyone. Let's go to the hand cam and we're gonna see if we can check out Donna's note. So she wants data recovery. Let me get her, let's start with the note. The note's always everyone's favorite part. All right, Donna was browsing Instagram and their phone seemed to freeze and touch didn't click through, didn't click though the screen was still on. The phone went dark, but the screen was still on for five minutes or so and then went black. So that's kind of weird. And that's, uh, that sounds uh, kind of scary because what I don't want to see is Donna's phone having some kind of a brain dead problem. Uh, those ones can be really tough. So when you say s image left, but it still had backlight, ng -ng -ng -ng, that makes me worried. Is it in DFU mode? Because that would stink if it is, because that often means that you have corruption of the actual memory, and that is not a repairable hardware defect. Then she cheers me up by saying the phone got very warm. Hooray, heat equals short. We love shorts. Shorts are everyone's favorite problem to solve. So I'm excited because I see that it got very warm. So I have hope. 
so warm that she put it on a cooling pad while she heads to the Apple store. Now, I just have this vision of Donna with uh, like a cooling pad, like an ice pack with her iPhone on an ice pack, like in an ambulance mode. Woo, 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 I'm going to Apple. They're going to help me. I'm going to get this phone fixed. I'm coming. And then she rocks up to the Genius Bar. And what happens, Donna? They plugged it into a tester. I would love to know what the heck that thing is. She plugged it into a tester that showed 0.340, whatever that is. What kind of tester? USB ammeter? I don't know. Therefore, apparently showing that it will not turn back on. I hadn't backed it up for a while. My mom had two strokes in June and I just didn't seem to have time. So I've lost all the data. I feel so disappointed in myself. Well, Donna, don't feel disappointed in yourself. Feel disappointed in the fact that you're that you did everything right. You took an ambulance to the Apple store with the phone on a cooling pad. That's that's fantastic. That's the best that you can do. You know, everybody makes mistakes. People let things slide. You know, there's there's and and that's why I think the data recovery is more, should be more like a speeding ticket in the long game of life, you know, where yeah, sometimes you don't get around to something that, that you should do. You know what? I need to get my gutters uh, cleaned out. There's leaves everywhere. And if I don't do it, they're going to fall down, you know, and I'll really kick myself. There's, there's, we all have that giant laundry list of things that we really should do. Don't beat yourself up, Donna. We're going to see if we can help you out with this phone. All right. So uh, let's pull up our chat window so we can talk with our peeps. All right. And we are going to see what's up with this phone. So just to keep it short, um, all I did was open up, open her up. This looks like a pretty classic looking seven plus. So she's got a seven plus. So I'm kind of looking around for water and I don't really see water. And this is the board and it looks, you know, pretty standard, but let's take a look under the microscope and we are going to see TCR circuit is here. Hi, Tim. I, uh, I saw a, a shout out on uh, Lewis's channel and I sent you a picture from when we were at Lewis's 1 million subscriber, uh, dinner of which I took a single picture and that was of my twin daughter's um, ordering spaghetti. So it was the two girls and the waiter, no Lewis, no nothing. So other than that, that one picture that I saw Justin Millman texting you, uh, no, <laughs> no other record that that even ever happened. All right. So let's look under the microscope here. Where can I get my microscope? Here we go. And let's see. So this is, uh, iPhone seven plus. So let's take a look. So we're going to hunt around the places where water tr typically hangs out in the seven plus, which is around this area. No water there looking around, nothing there. And then this looks a little bit, a little beat up. You can see kind of these like pock marks that usually means kind of pressure or got run over, uh, everything, no water, a little abrasion mark right there on the back of that, uh, sticker. Uh, there's a little bit of wetness there. Now down here, this is odd to me. This looks fluxy. I haven't done anything to this board. This is, this is like flux. So somebody's been here before. Somebody's been here before, but I, I don't, I don't know. I, I just kind of, it feels like it was a native presentation as far as opening. I think I'm the first person to open that screen. So maybe this is an Apple refurb. I'm not really sure. So let's kind of, let's try to guess. What do you guys notice when you find a device that you're like, I'm pretty sure this is a refurb when you can tell the adhesive is new and things like that. BC connection. Chris Long says Apple never lies. They told me I needed a new logic board after my battery died and I believe them. I don't believe that you do believe them, Chris. I think you're full of shit. That's what I think. All right. So see when this, like when this foam sticker is just kind of like not perfectly pin straight, that kind of looks like it may have been sort of haphazardly put on. Look at this one. This is wrinkled. So to me, I think this is a refurb. This is never kind of wrinkly like this when they are really factory fresh. 
and it just kind of looks a little little solder ball there a little sticky a little gummy um, one of the big tells in the old six plus whether or not it was refurb used to be this now these are on all the sevens but on the six I think when they take these shields off and when they put the when they put them back on these cans put on these cans uh, they they don't actually solder that row it's always cracked so they just kind of like glue it across and they solder just the sides um, that's not so much true I haven't noticed that in the seven yeah somebody's been here's like a probe mark the kind of it doesn't look like it was done by machine right there so who knows uh, uh, yeah it's just this is this is messy and I don't think that this is water this is repair this is fluxy and and gooey that's not really how water would present plus there's no corrosion on this board oh and look at that there's signs of heat do you see the do you see the little solder balls popping out of these dudes solder ball popping out of that guy solder ball solder ball solder ball this is overheating so somebody heated up around here or else the device heated itself up something is up with this board the gooey messiness that stickers kind of in a weird spot that to me reeks of refurb this is a total refurb all right let's see um you can tell that they have been ultrasonic and the liquid damage indicators replaced along with the apple uh fru stamp so I don't know how this board came to be like that, but it is a really sort of important observation of the history. So before we do anything else then, let's go ahead and take off the easy sticker shields just so that we can kind of take a look to see was any work done. Now, a lot of times on these refurbs, you really can't tell like what was done and why. So it may be that, that they just kind of like replace these stickers or just kind of have a look or something i don't really know i'd like to know though so if you know tell me if you know anything about the process that apple contractors use to refurbish boards this is not happening in the united states as far as i know tell me if you know if you work for one of these guys i'd like to know so you can tell me just send me an email at info at ipadrehab.com because i would like to know and then i can help everybody to know and we'll all be much happier yes yeah, so this is just kind of like a little bit dinged up in here a little bit of snot around uh what else can we learn i really want to know donna where'd you get this phone did you get it at the apple store did you get it at a carrier store did you originally get a different seven plus and then did you turn it back in because it had a problem and then you got this one what do you say all right, let's see. Did Apple do an audio IC repair? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. Apple would never do an audio IC repair. Did they underfill it? No. Eh, all right. So that's the end of our physical observation. Careful, Jessa. You'll shock the board since you don't have your wireless anti-static wrist strap one. You're absolutely right. I am going to put it on but I don't actually have a nearby one. So I'm gonna just do a DIY um, ESD strap and I'm just gonna um, use this and I'm gonna put it around my neck because that I think is prettier, don't you think? So all safe now, no possibility of any kind of electrostatic discharge happening around here. Now let's carry on and go to our electrical exam. So we're going to go to the trust based DC power supply, which you can't see because I'm too dumb to figure out how to hook this up to make it on the screen. Any of you can feel free to come over to iPad Rehab at 4 North Main Street in Honey Eye Falls. Come on over anytime, just knock on the door and say, hey, Jessa, I am here to set up your on screen DC power supply. And I'll say, come on in come on and set it up right now any of you guys just grab the nearest Amtrak train and it will come right into Rochester <clears throat> I rode the Amtrak chain train to New York City and it is super nice I did one of the sleeper cars highly recommend I mean that is the best way to travel it's like being a baby where it just kind of uh, rocks you to sleep I mean, you can totally sleep right in the middle of the day in the Amtrak sleeper car I mean, it's almost so amazing and so nice that I would just say, yeah, just, give me, just take me back to Rochester. I don't really need to, you know, I don't really need to high five Lewis. 
for his one million. I'll be all right. Okay, so I just connected DC power and guess what? The trust-based DC power supply says that I have a leak of 0 0.6. So 600 milliamps of current is moving to ground. 600 milliamps, what does that mean? What do you guys think? 600 milliamps, as soon as I connect that power supply, what could that be? That doesn't sound like a VCC main short. So what could it be? It's not after I prompt a boot, it's right away. What does a 600 milliamp draw mean? So let's see um, if anybody knows. So DFU is one guest from high voltage 12V. And I'm gonna say probably not because DFU, I would expect 80 to 100 milliamps, not five or 600. Five or 600 is a significant, probably a power line short to ground. So what else? All right, so VDD boost. Yes, NAND or VDD boost. That's what I would look for as well. So this is where we're gonna just sort of apply experience and just kind of say from experience, current consumption right out of the gate of 600 milliamps in my experience, across all phones 3vo nand is one on this phone vdd boost would be a big one and then i might start thinking about things like could it be on another device 1v8 sd ram usually that's not uh it's it's much stronger here on the 7 7 plus i might be thinking about speaker amp speaker boost arc driver these sort of related um, lines that go off of battery through some kind of a chip or even backlight can sometimes backlight when the diode doesn't blow could cause this. All right, so let's, I'm going to guess VDD boost. So let's just jump straight ahead and measure VDD boost. So we need to find a spot where we can measure VDD boost, which means I need to open up ZXW. So we're going to find the ZXW, wake it up for the evening report and see what we can do. VDD boost is when battery V is too low to buck regulate. So VDD boost is a new circuit that the iPhone 7 has that the 6, 6S series doesn't have. Now, what did the 6S have that was in the news? The 6S had battery problems, right? So it would be like, oh, it says 20 or 30%. Boom, it's dead. Ah, freak out, freak out. And that caused, that problem, that sort of drop, caused Apple to respond by quietly down throttling all iPhones so that if you had a low battery, your processor speed would be reduced. Now that's not a terrible thing. It's just terrible that they didn't tell us they were doing that, but it's actually kind of good to say, oh, looks like there's not enough voltage here to really maintain that device to be on if there's some sort of a spike. So we don't want it to just drop off. Let's just kind of turn the lights down here so that we can kind of hang on. So in the seven, there's a new design, which is, hey, why don't we take a low VDD main? So when the main power rail kind of drips down to that like super low battery, why don't we take that and do a boost circuit? So VDD is a boost circuit that's actually, it's, it's going to push up and kind of boost, convert that low voltage up to a higher voltage to kind of support the, um, the device so that it can stay on and not have those sort of like random drops. Who did Apple lie to today? Donna, we think, but we're not sure yet. So now we're gonna go to ZXW and Let's see, ZXW, let me promote you so that we can see you. There you are, ZXW. What's up, bro? We are going to look at ZXW to see if we can find out. In the iPhone 7 Plus, where's a good place to measure VDD boost? Because our experience says, why don't you check on VDD boost and see if that might be short. So let's find out where is a good spot. So we're waiting on ZXW to load. Here it is, and we're gonna look on this back side of the board, and we're gonna click this guy, and now we can see a bunch of different spots. This is the VDD boost circuit. So let's just find this guy, I usually use him as my canary, and say, hey, what is the relative resistance on VDD boost? Okay, so we're gonna turn this board around and orient it so that it matches there we go, and we can see that guy right there. So now we're gonna use the trust-based multimeter. And just like the trust-based DC power supply, if you wanna come over here, I have sitting right here one of the special fancy multimeters that can put an on-screen display. I spent about five minutes trying to hook it up. 
gave up probably because this machine is running like Windows 8. And if you want to come sh uh, set it up for me, that's fantastic. Just roll on up to iPad Rehab at 4 North Main Street in Honey Eye Falls. Beautiful, scenic Honey Eye Falls, which is now featuring fall foliage in fantastic colors. So let's find out. One side is ground and the other side is 0 0.001. 0 0.000 0 0.001 that is short oh my god totally totally called it high five everybody in chat that said vdd boost you got it you are right now why what particular dude on vdd boost is actually the the one that is causing a short to ground i don't know let's go back to zxw to check on the possibility so there's not really a ton of possibility so vdd boost is could be the pmic could be audio ic and it could be these kind of larger caps around that could fail and i think there's like a couple guys there's a guy over here and i think there's a guy kind of way over there so which one of these is the actual bad guy? I don't know. Let's kind of look for visual damage and see, just kind of let's put our eyeballs on these guys and see if we can find anything. Unless maybe, chat, you're on a roll. Hey chat, do you know which one of these guys would you expect to be the cause of a VDD boost short? Let's find out what chat has to say about it. Let's see. It's the cap you tested, says Nick. That's his guest. Um, called it woohoo. Yes, canary in the mine shop. Yes, the big cap near PMIC. That's the same guy. That's the same guy. So we only have one vote for that. And um, short killer. Yeah. Uh, cap near VDDIC or cap above Wi Fi. Um, so. So Chris is suggesting that it's, you know, one of one of these guys by the little, you know, booster. But I'd like to see one that like looks brown or something. So I am going to go on a hunt. Let's look over here. Did this guy look brown? I'm trying to figure out is there any kind of a connection between the relatively rough appearance of this board and the fact that we kind of have this BDD boost short. I don't think so, but I am going to kind of pull this little you know janky sticker and see if i can um see if maybe somebody like i don't know clonked into the little corner here where there is vdd boost and if i can't figure it out then my next plan would be to use some heat and if i have to i'll inject a voltage into vdd boost to try to see all right let's see uh is this guy this guy kind of looks rough does he it looks like some no i don't know that that might just be the the sticker residue all right let's go ahead and jump to the heat and see if we can find anything that's heating up hey simon how was robotics meh are you gonna go to ruckus yeah probably. great bailey's gonna did you fill out your permission slip yeah great so responsible why don't you rub some of that off on Bailey? All right, so now we are going to, uh, is robotics over? Where's my kid? He had to come home early because Anna forgot to take the food and printing supplies there. Oh, yeah. tisk tisk tisk. Uh, yeah, get busy, bro. All right, so we are gonna plug in our voltage source and we are going to use our available at ipad rehab supply the amazing the beautiful the 3d printed by these guys right here uh anna's macro lens even though anna did apparently forget her laptop and the robotics team could not 3d print anything tonight but we will let her slide because this is an amazing invention that makes the seat compact pro perfect for figuring out what is short so let's see what we can see all right, so we are going to kind of take a look at this board, and we're really expecting to see, is it one of these guys that are, that are kind of like in this area? So how do I need to move it so that you guys can, can see it sort of along with me? All right, so that would be our resolution. Let's go ahead and hit the juice and see 
what happens. All right, so let's see what happens. Let's look in this area right here. All right, so you guys see that we are getting a hot spot at a chip. Do ignore. Unlike everyone that takes that chip off, we're going to take a look at why that chip's not the problem. And we're going to ignore that, and we're going to look kind of like elsewhere. And I hate to say it, but it looks like Nick is the winner. Nick is, has called it as it's the one you tested. So can you see that we have a cap? Very clearly, it's that cap there. As I'm, I'm pulling, I'm kind of pulsing the DC power supply. Boop, 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 and you can see it pulsing. And it's, it's really, really clear that we have a hot spot that is a single cap that is right next to the um, spot that I measured before. And let's now go take a look. So we are going to flip back to the microscope view and kind of drill in on that area so that you can see exactly what we're talking about. So we're going to go back to the microscope view and drill in on that area. Now, Jessa, why isn't it the IC? All right, I'll tell you why. Uh, where is it? OK, so we saw on, under the uh, thermal cam, we saw this dude here, the crystal, was purple. And then we saw this guy was pulsing super white hot, even though he really looks great. And this is the spot where I originally took that measurement. All right. And while it could have been any of these guys, it's unlikely, and I don't think I've ever seen a case, that it was this guy here. So why did this guy get hot? I don't know. Let's go on a hunt. Let's try to figure it out. So let's go back to ZXW and try to figure out what the heck that guy is. So that guy that we said, please ignore, ignore him, U2301. So what is U2301? Let's go to the schematic, which I don't know if I can show you the schematic, but let's try. So I'm going to see if I have a 7 plus schematic, which I might not. Oh, I do. Actually, I don't have a 7 plus schematic. I have a 7 plus schematis. That's what it says. And on the 7 plus schematis, I, let's see if I can, if it will pop up this way. There it is. On the 7 plus schematis, See it? 7 plus schematis.pdf. We are going to search for U2301. And here it is. And it is a chip, and his name is Boost. So, Boost. This is the guy that is the one we said, please ignore. What does Boost do? Let's try to figure it out. What's the input? All right, I'm going to guess that the input is where it says VIN. And the input to this guy is VDD main. All right, VDD main makes sense, is the input. Now we've got this thing here, PMU to boost enable. So a signal that's a one or a zero that the power management chip is gonna say, whoa, 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 whoa. We have a very increasingly low voltage on main, which comes from the battery. Shanae, let's go ahead and trigger that boost, bing. So it's gonna ping this with a one on the enable line and that is going to trigger the boost guy to put out his output. And the output then is going to be PP VDD boost. So it is technically possible that maybe B3 and B4 started talking to D3 and D4, which are ground. So it could be that within or under the VDD boost chip, it's possible that that is the cause of the short. So why the heck am I saying, eh, ignore that? Here's why. Because we don't have a short on main. So over here on the left, we don't have a short on main, but we do have a short on the output. So why does this chip get hot? Let's think about the reason that anything gets hot on the board, and here's why. The thinnest wire gets hot. So it's not that the offending cap gets hot, the thinnest wire gets hot. So why is it that often with these shorts, we'll see like a capacitor light up? Well, because when a capacitor fails, Think about how it actually fails. Those plates inside barely touch, and that makes a really thin wire. The thinnest wire, that gets hot. That's what makes that cap light up and get hot. So why is this chip getting hot? Well, you know what else is a really thin wire? A chip. 
So in order for the electricity to actually get into the hole of ground through the cap, it has to go through this chip. And that chip is inherently a thin wire. So because we are, we are uh, injecting electricity from battery to main, from main through the boost IC and the thin wires, that's going to get hot, even though it's just like a, a belt. It's just kind of like a tight spot. It's not actually the cause of the short. The short is down past the IC. Now, it could be, but I don't think so. I think that it's, going, it's getting hot as just a, a consequence of the fact that it's passing uh, electricity to the actual short, which I think is out on that big cap. But what do I know? Maybe I'm wrong. So let's see. What do you guys think? Does that sound good? See hot, replace hot, only after rehot. No. Um, so let's find out. Yeah, so it acts like the battery main MOSFET. Same exact thing. It's a thin wire that has to pass electricity to actually get to the short. Let's get back to the board, though, and let's see. According to our calculations, according to our calculations, we think that what's wrong with this board is not uh, anything wrong with the boost IC. I don't think it's the boost IC. I think that's getting hot just kind of as a troll. And I think that we're actually looking at a, that this guy here is a wire to ground. So how are we going to get that guy off? I mean, that seems really tough. He's right next to a crystal. Oh, I don't want to shove a razor in there and just jank up that whole area. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to slap this guy in a board holder. Into the board holder. Get in there. I don't care what you smell. Bold him down. All right, so now he's in the board holder so that I can do a little bit of kind of scrape, scrape, and kind of get that underfill loosened up, cleaned out a little bit. Wait, where is this microphone? Where is it? There we go. Without killing your guys' eardrums, I think. So I'm going to use hair dryer heat and just kind of gently, gently make it so that I can rock that cap out without bothering the underfilled PMIC. I really don't want to have to replace that today. And I also don't want to have to replace that, that um, crystal. So let's go after it. So we are going to just dig a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything to be at 200 degrees. That's just hair dryer heat. That's just a Death Valley ca car dashboard. And if we take this little extra step, then we should be able to just kind of rock out or nudge out this guy without really causing too much strain on everybody else in the neighborhood. And the heat really, really helps to just kind of loosen up this crud. All right, there we go. I just snapped the board in half. Well, there's that method. Uh, let's see. I usually heat it and twist. All right, so now we are going to just kind of rock. And usually, if it's, if it's problematic, where did it go? I can't see it. There it is. If it's problematic, then it's usually really easy to just come right off like so. All right, and here is the offending asshole. What I'd really like to do is come up with a project or something. What should I do, chat? Help me. What should I do with all of these caps now wires? What I think would be funny to do would be to use them in some kind of a project. What just came unhooked. I don't know. I kind of think it would be fun to like, you know, light up a Christmas tree light with a whole bunch of these or something. I don't know. It would be pretty fun. My kids like to use them to kind of decorate quarters and solder them on like earrings on George Washington. All right. Let's see. Hey, are you a wire? He is a wire. Ha ha ha. Found you. Found you again, mofo. All right. I'm going to save this guy and I'm going to start a collection. 
And then I'm going to wait for the smart people in chat to give me an idea about what to do with all of the single bed caps that are board killing caps. That was a board killing cap. A board killing cap that is as small as a grain of pepper. Today I had Maddie from Vice hanging out with me all day, which was really, really fun. Maddie is super smart and she followed along great and we did a bunch of repairs all day. And she, I got to take a picture of her holding one of these sort of like offending caps on the end of her finger. And it is remarkably tiny. If you have not had a chance to actually stick one on your finger, it's really, really tiny. You should, you should try it. Board killing caps. What should I do with them? What do you guys say in chat while I check to see how are we doing? Build a board with entirely broken caps. I do have one board here for a video that I was going to do where one of the major data, re major data recovery companies um, was trying to troubleshoot a board and they put a cap in a filter position, which you can't put a cap in a filter position. They had no idea. And so I was going to do a stream on that one day. I'm not sure if I'll ever get around to it. And that one, I think it would be fun to replace the cap in a filter position with a broken cap that does act like a wire and put a broken cap in the filter position and see if it turns back on. That would be pretty funny. Make a coil of caps. Make a coil of caps. That would be cool, but I think it would be a really labor intensive. I kind of want to make like a necklace that you could actually like wear. I don't know. All right, let's see. Use as jumpers. Make an hourglass out of them. That's a cool idea. Board killing caps. Uh-oh, I better hurry up because it sounds like the door, which means kids are here, which means robotics is over. Huh? No kids. Oh, it's just Christy. Ah, forget it. It's fine. We can stay here all night. Deadline is, is over. All right, so let's see. Are we, can we all see on this? All right, we're going to find out the fate of Donna's board. So what did Donna say? She's, Donna feels bad about herself. We are going to make you feel better about yourself, Donna. Donna, get ready to smile. It's happening. It's going to happen. I don't care what Apple told you. They lied to you. It is going to be a great day for Donna. Or... A terrible day if this doesn't work in which case we will all cry ourselves to sleep me included definitely Christy and let's see what happens we I don't know why that USB just decided to connect all right I'm prompting to boot I see an Apple logo but will it boot loop will it crush our souls in misery when that delicious puffy white perfect apple logo just fades into black darkness showing us that it's got software corruption and that it's in a terrible boot loop will our dreams be crushed forever or are we going to be victorious will we see it brighten will we see it light up will we see her lock screen i don't know what will it be what will we be telling donna will we be calling her with news of joy and exaltation and making all of her dreams come true by giving her back her precious data or will we be shoving in a pile and waiting till she gets pissed off and starts calling here where we're like fine it didn't work out i don't know <gasps> yay it's the lock screen it booted it's gonna be a great day for donna 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 i am so so happy let's see oh it's gonna work it has touch Donna knew her passcode. Great job. Yay. Yay. Hooray. Hooray. Screw you, Apple Store. And your note and your, your dumb meter that says 0 0.340. Therefore, it will never turn back on. What do you know? Another win for independent repair. Hooray. $20. She doesn't know her passcode. You put you can make the checkout to iPad. You know what? Just come on up and you'll know me $20. All you need to do is install e your choice. It's the multimeter on screen or DC power supply. 
Come up Niagara Falls. Don't you want to come to Niagara Falls? Come on up, Chris. It's going to be fun. All right. Uh, Jessa, how do you charge this? What are you talking about? Uh, you're welcome, Donna. Nick solves it again. <laughs> um, this is here for data recovery. So it gets, you know, it's going to be recovered. And for us, data recovery is the labor part is still to go, right? So for us, data recovery is extensive because it means take a backup, which is heavy duty on some of these. These are some of them are like 256, 500 gigs we had the other day. It's monstrous. Take a backup and then do whatever it takes to pull out all the pictures and the videos and the favorites and the Snapchat and organize all of that. Pull out all of the messages and put that into a PDF where it has the, exactly how it looked on the phone with all the images embedded into the messages. Notes, contacts, um, voicemails, voice memos, uh, history, all of that stuff we're going to pull out of the backup and we're going to parse it and we're going to put it onto a drive for her. We're going to do that so that she can get that drive. This phone, whether it goes back working or not, is totally outside of our data recovery service. So we're, our data recovery service is this part, is part A, make it turn on, and part B, pull off, parse, extract, copy the data. And then if you're gonna get your phone back, and if it works, great, you might get some use out of it. We don't guarantee or warranty the long-term use of our data phones. So this one though, is gonna, gonna go back and be fine. And that'll just be a nice bonus for Donna on her data recovery service. So there we go, that is it for this stream. And I will see you the next time that somebody sends something here with a complaint that Apple said when it's actually repairable. Have a great night.